Let's look at question number three. Now, question number three in the paper, this is what we call the structure question, okay? And if you remember from when we were reading through the paper and highlighting, this question asks you to look at the whole of the source and it tells you that the text is from the start of a short story and you're asked how the writer structured this text to interest you as a reader. Now, as I mentioned, as you can see from these first two bullet points, you're asked to look at the beginning of the source and how this focus changes. I would say use these two bullet points in one paragraph, okay? So find something, a quotation from from the beginning of the source versus a quotation from the end of the source and then talk about that in one paragraph and how it makes this passage interesting for us as readers and then maybe you can pick up another structural feature okay so let's go back to the passage and pick out the relevant information okay so as i mentioned you could pick out the opening and you could contrast it with the closing okay so of course at the closing we've got alice who is uh, she listens to Hartop and she takes up the flo flowers, walks away, vanishes, okay? Now, this is of course when her father tells her to keep on going, okay? This is in contrast to the opening where we've got a general wide opening, a focus on the van. So you could argue, for example, using some evidence from here, okay? So let's have a look at what we can pick out here. I would suggest either beginning by focusing, if you notice this first sentence, ends in half darkness here okay so this sentence is three lines and a few extra words long already what this shows you is that this is a complex sentence okay remember complex sentence is a sentence which has one or more main clause that's uh, joined with subordinate clauses, okay? Now, what you could say about this complex sentence is that it begins by focusing our attention on the van. It intrigues us, okay? We can see that there's a journey and it begins with a general and broad description of this van. So we are intrigued, our attention is immediately captured. Then as the passage progresses, you can almost see it as kind of this inverted pyramid shape, okay? So an inverted triangle, it becomes more and more focused. So it starts off quite broad, which is the top of the uh, inverted triangle, okay? And when I say inverted triangle, it's literally that, right? So it be begins quite broad. And then it focuses in on the family itself, Hartop, the family's appearance, and then it ends with a really, really specific focus on Alice, okay? So I would suggest juxtaposing at the beginning. So this is you answering the two bullet points, okay? So as I mentioned here, you want to address the beginning versus change of focus. Talk about how it starts with a broad description of the family van, which intrigues us as readers, versus how it ends, okay? And here, I would suggest maybe picking out this sentence okay alice obeyed at once this is what we call a simple sentence okay and remember a simple sentence is a sentence with a subject verb and of object okay so usually it has a subject verb it's very brief okay and this simple sentence focuses our attention on alice and of course we can see here how uh she feels quite abused by her father she's quite stoic and we feel lots of sympathy for her i would say that's your first point now, I would also suggest the other point you can make when it go back to the question in terms of how this structure, this text is structured to interest its readers, the mention, the continuous reference to these chrysanthemum flowers, okay? So there's this repetition of chrysanthemums throughout the passage, even here at the end, okay? So you can see here chrysanthemums, okay, which Alice picks up. And of course, also her dad is, uh, and of course, even Alice says here that the thing that he had run over, which made him stop because he was wondering what's made the van stop. And she says, oh, it's only a bunch of chrysanthemums. However, he, when she is holding on to them, her father, who's furious, leaves her alone in the darkness holding these chrysanthemums. Okay, so as you can see here, the word chrysanthemums, these flowers, they are repeated throughout the passage, okay? And even at the beginning here, as you can see, chrysanthemums are referred to. I would say the repetition of these chrysanthemums, you could interpret them as representing and symbolizing hope, okay? So chrysanthemums, even think about flowers generally. Flowers tend to represent beauty, they tend to represent hope, okay? So perhaps we can see that the chrysanthemums is, are used as a motif by the writer to show that Alice, even as she's holding these chrysanthemums at the end of the passage, at the end of the extract, she's still clutching onto a little bit of hope for her family, which is juxtaposed with her father's 
anger and her father's rage okay so the chrysanthemums which also survive the dad running over it with the van this represents hope this also represents strength okay so now we have picked out the two bits of evidence or the three bits okay because you have the complex sentence as well as the simple sentence for your first paragraph and then the repetition of the chrysanthemums remember repetition is a structural point let's now have a go at answering the question okay so let's go back to question number three. And as I mentioned, you want for an eight mark question to write two paragraphs, okay? Uh, use the peel structure, point evidence explanation link, okay? Now, I will write the first peel structure here. And of course, I will use my trusty notepad for my second paragraph here, okay? Now, with this question, always begin by using a bit of the question to start your answer, okay? So, the question being, has the writer structured to the text to interest you as a reader? Just talk about how the writer has effectively structured the text to interest us as readers. And we're gonna begin with the beginning versus the change, okay? So, you can start by stating the writer you can even substitute the word effectively for successfully. So the writer successfully structured the text to interest us as readers. Okay, bear in mind I'm talking about us as opposed to saying me, okay? Try to, if you say us, you're still including you, okay? But try as much as you can when you're writing to write in third person perspective, okay? It sounds more professional, it sounds more serious from the examiner's perspective as a student. So let's go back to the point. The writer successfully structured the text to interest us as readers as they begin by depicting, which means showing, the van on a slow journey which intrigues us as the passage ends the focus shifts to Alice who is left alone in the darkness by her father and this ending sustains our interest as readers. Okay, so just to be clear, here is the point, okay? So I'm addressing these two bullet points where I'm looking at the beginning and also the shift of focus and I'm talking about this focus being at the end. The writer successfully structured the text to interest us as readers as they begin by depicting the van on a slow journey, which intrigues us. As the passage ends, the focus shifts to Alice, who is left alone in the darkness by her father, and this ending sustains our interest as readers. So I began by directly addressing the question using keywords that I've highlighted in the question and also addressing these two bullet points. So now let's move on to the evidence, okay? And remember, given that this is a fairly long piece of evidence, something like this, which is a complex sentence, you do not have to write it all out, okay? In fact, you shouldn't write out too long a quotation. I would suggest picking just two or three words from the beginning of the sentence, maybe one or two from the end, and then just use ellipsis, okay, to refer to this complex sentence. And also you could uh, say the same for this simple sentence at the end. Alice obeyed at once. You can write it all out. However, if you just selected two or three words and use ellipsis for the rest, that's also fine, okay? So now let's go back to the answer. So you can state, at the beginning of the paragraph or rather of the extract the writer focuses our attention on a Ford Moto van dot 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 in so now i can see here i've jumped to squally november darkness okay so i'm going to select this bit to end my quotation so uh, the writer focuses our attention on a ford motor van dot 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 in squally november and then i'm going to put dot 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 okay the writer 
opens by broadly describing a trip and we wish to know more. By the end, we mm, focus on Alice and then so let's embed the quotation from the end of the passage who obeyed at once okay so I've embedded the quotation here obeyed at once when her father told her to stay in the darkness okay so this is a slightly longer evidence because don't forget we're doing two jobs here okay we're highlighting the um, evidence which addresses the beginning uh, bullet point as well as a change of focus okay at the beginning of the extract the writer focuses our attention on a ford motor van in squally november okay so i've embedded my first quotation from the beginning the writer opens by broadly describing a trip and we wish we knew to know more by the end we focus on alice who speech marks obeyed at once when her father told her to stay in the darkness okay so i've added two pieces of evidence of course you don't have to write out the full quotation just use ellipsis okay now let's talk about the explanation remember in your explanation you are adding technique and of course the technique you want to mention is a structural technique okay so of course the structural technique you're considering is the complex sentence uh juxtaposed to the simple sentence so let's move on to the explanation the writer's use of a complex sentence at the beginning makes us curious to learn why the characters in the story are traveling in such dark and forbidding weather. By the end, we learn of the tension in the family and the simple sentence shows how mistreated Alice is by her top which makes us sad yet highly engaged okay so this is my explanation okay i've added uh sentence structure so of course i'm adding structure within my response so let's go over the explanation the writer's use of a complex sentence at the beginning makes us curious to learn why the characters in the story are traveling in such dark and forbidden weather by the end we learn of the tension in the family and the simple sentence shows how mistreated Alice is by Hartop, which makes us sad yet highly engaged. Okay, so now let's link back to the question. Of course, I don't have enough space, so I'm going to move on to my trusty notebook. Okay, so this is the link back to the question. Remember, of course, in your link, you can still use some of the elements in your point in your opening point to link it back to the question. Okay, in terms of how this interests us as readers. So you can say thus the writer's opening which is vague immediately captures our interest as readers and the ending of the extract sustains our intrigue as we feel intense sympathy 
for Alice. Okay, so that is it with the link back. Okay, so thus the writer's opening, which is vague, immediately captures our interest as readers and the ending of the extract sustains our intrigue as we feel intense sympathy for Alice. So just to go back, I've used the peel method in this opening structure question. Okay, and I've addressed both bullet points. So now let me address the second or rather the third bullet point where it's talking about structural features and we're going to talk about the chrysanthemums. I don't need to look back on the insert because I'm just going to talk about repetition throughout the passage of this particular flower. Okay, so I'm going to talk about repetition, which is a structural point. That's going to be my final peel paragraph for question number three. So I'll add additionally. So this is my opening point. Additionally, the writer maintains our interest in the narrative, narrative instead of story, okay, but it's the same thing or in the extract, through repeated reference to the flowers, which makes us wonder what these flowers symbolize, okay? So now let's move on to the evidence of the chrysanthemums, and I'm talking about repetition. The writer... Okay, so this is my evidence. So obviously this evidence is much more brief than the previous one. So let's just look at the evidence. So the writer repetitively refers to chrysanthemums and the repetition is effective in intriguing and entertaining us as readers. Remember, repetition is a structural point. So let's move on to the explanation. Remember, by the way, you don't have to say that they definitely symbolize hope, beauty, and strength. They could symbolize something different for you. I would suggest always look at things like flowers as symbolizing beauty, okay? But they can also symbolize strength. However, in the context of this story, I definitely would argue that you should definitely consider that. But then also, it's not so much about always interpreting it. Make sure you also explain why you've made that interpretation, okay? So that's gonna be going into my explanation, okay? So uh, going back to this, Okay, so this is my explanation. So let's go back to the explanation. The reference to this species of flowers throughout the passage is interesting for us as readers because the flowers appear to symbolize hope, beauty, as well as strength. We can see that even if Hartop ran over these flowers, they still survived as Alice clutched onto them, representing her holding onto hope. Okay, so that's my interpretation, that's my explanation. Let's think back to the question. Therefore, Okay, so let's look back at the link. So, therefore, the writer successfully interests us as readers by using chrysanthemums as symbolic flowers as they seem to represent hope and beauty in the midst of darkness. So now I've linked it back to the question and how this makes us interested as readers. Okay, so just to recap, let's go back to the first paragraph. I've used peel with my first paragraph and I've addressed these first two bullet points within my peel structure. And of course, here is the link. And then in the second paragraph, I have addressed the final bullet point, okay, talked about structure. And in this case, I've used repetition and talked about the chrysanthemums, okay? So that's really it when it comes to answering question number three. So that is it. If you enjoyed this style of video, where I give you a more direct demonstration of exactly how to go through each question piece by piece, do let me know, okay? Because I'd be more than happy to produce more videos in this style and more lessons within this framework, okay? So if you have enjoyed this video, do make sure you let me know and I'll be more than happy to produce more videos in a similar format. Thank you so much for listening.